Welcome back to a new episode of the Startup Show. Today, I have the big pleasure to introduce you to a serial entrepreneur and investor, Mark. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. So welcome back to a new episode of the Startup Show. Today, I have the big pleasure to introduce you to Mark. He's a serial entrepreneur and investor. So please, you know, as usual on the show, give us a little bit of background um, about yourself. Yes, hi, um, I'm Mark. I'm in the internet space since uh, 1999, so quite a long journey. Uh, founded back then uh, my first internet company with a very close friend from college when I was uh, 19, 20 years old. Back then, the main constraint was that people were not in the broad masses uh, in the internet. Uh, so that was a little bit uh, different setup than today. The first company was uh, in a entertainment, an entertainment platform from Switzerland called uh, Usgang.ch, mm -hmm. Swiss German name, was acquired by a German publishing house called uh, Axel Springer a few years later. I remember when I was 16 years old, when we go out like clubbing, that was the place you want to be featured on, on that yeah, platform. <laughs> yeah, back then, I mean, the, it, it was in the pre-Facebook uh, times. <laughs> so uh, we had a lot of visitors on uh, Friday evening to check what to do during the weekend and then especially on Monday morning. So everybody wanted to see if there's a nice, hopefully a nice picture uh, on, on our platform um, doing uh, some party stuff. Yeah going out. So um, it was a perfect combination, especially also for us, because back then we were both uh, students. So we could combine a little bit our private lifestyle going out quite often and then even uh, have a web-based business out of it. So that was a quite a nice and unique uh, time uh, back then. After I, I uh, co-founded another company in the event business called uh, Amiando, it was uh, mainly focusing on conferences, international events in Munich. So spent four years in Munich and uh, this company is now belonging to uh, Xing, the uh, German uh, version of LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So uh, nowadays uh, the Xing event Part of Xing is uh, like the former uh, uh, business model of uh, Amiando. After uh, uh, the acquisition of, of Amiando uh, in 2010, I, I moved uh, more into investor role and started to focus on uh, fintech back then. Also a little bit ahead of the of the hype, let's say, mm -hmm. and uh, with uh, next generation finance invest, uh, the first investment company in Europe, fully focusing on fintech. We did. Uh, a few investments in this space and uh, yeah now everybody uh, is hot on fintech so uh, good for us uh, yeah, good for, for sure. us being there a little bit ahead of the curve for sure i mean like all the big banks talk about the you know blockchain and currency and all this encrypting and um, tell us a little bit about uh, your company at the moment uh, finleap uh, what, what you guys do there yeah finleap is a berlin based uh, company builder so we Literally, we are like a manufacturer. The aim is to produce uh, or create uh, three to five uh, new fintech, uh, insurtech companies a year. So now, after less than two and a half years, we have uh, 10 running businesses, among others, uh, a fully licensed uh, bank called Solaris Bank. So mm -hmm. I would say we go more into the a little bit more complex cases, uh, a lot of B2B stuff. Uh, uh, with higher entry barriers and we have a few very interesting additional companies in the pipeline for early next year mm -hmm. and including the portfolio we have roughly 300 people working for Finleap and our ventures so far so uh, very fast moving uh, fast moving surrounding mm -hmm. tell me just before uh, we discussed a little bit about about Finleap you said you had how many applications every month yeah right now we have over uh, more than 800 applications per month so people from all over the world uh, looking for, a, for an opportunity in Berlin uh, in the fintech space. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think recruiting is, as a company builder, one of the key elements to get the best talent. I mean, we are now in a setup, uh, let's call it war on talents. So we really want to have the best uh, people for our ventures. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I think uh, the big differentiator in the fintech space compared to other, let's say, less complex uh, businesses is that uh, you really need the expertise. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, for the co-founder profiles, we need people with a several years experience in the financial industry. So we have a lot of people uh, moving from London, working, I don't know, 10 years in the investment banking uh, sector in London for the big uh, players like Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, and now willing to take the entrepreneurial road. And uh, that's a little bit like the key element uh, for Finleap as a company builder. We really need the best people joining us to create the most successful fintech companies in Europe. Maybe you can explain to my audience a little bit what a company builder is, because it's something, a new term, I think, 
think that's kind of like something that is not so common when you speak to investors. Like you yeah. said, like, they're like definitely the dumb and smart investors. But like, I guess you're a little bit even smarter than the smart investors when you say like you're yeah. actually involved in a day-to-day -day business. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we're not the dumb <laughs> investors. But uh, yeah. I, I would say, I mean, from my perspective, it's a little bit bringing the best of the two worlds together. So entrepreneurship and venture capital. So at the end, we really start the companies ourselves from scratch. So we even staff the founding team. So mm -hmm. we put together the best people from the technical department with the best business people. So uh, we have a whole range, which is, uh, I think, especially in the fintech space, necessary to succeed. And then we fund the companies up to two million ourselves. So we really take the first step to finance and support the first few months of these companies. So as I said in the beginning, uh, it's a little bit like a combination, like a manufacturer. We really literally build the companies ourselves and try to combine, let's say, the advantages of entrepreneurial activities with the activities of a venture capitalist. Mm -hmm. So uh, combining these two worlds. So that's for me a little bit the definition of a, of a company builder. So tell me when, when you, let's say, get approached by one of these fintech uh, potential companies, how do you decide which one is something that you would like to build a company with them? I mean, uh, there are definitely quite a few different approaches. From my personal perspective, I'm perhaps a little bit old-fashioned and traditional. It's all about uh, generating revenue and profits. So I'm not really into the fancy, crazy, let's disrupt everything and see how we will earn money in 10 years from now. So I'm more uh, on the conservative side and I like mainly cases where you have mid to short term perspective to really become profitable mm -hmm. and generate substantial revenue, which is especially in the in the fintech space, sometimes not that easy because you have very high entry barriers. For example, to get the full banking license uh, in Germany, you need uh, 10 million euro just to put on the bank account to get the license. Yeah. So it's not uh, that easy as an entrepreneur just to start from scratch and uh, become profitable. That's why I think one of the big advantages of a company builder, especially in this space, is that you as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, you can fully focus on your business and everything uh, around, uh, let's say, compliance, PR, all the, let's say, non-business driven uh, activities, you can outsource it to the company builder in the beginning and really fully focus on your uh, business model and on scaling your business. Mm -hmm. Well, when you think about fintech, let's say, I mean, like most of us probably as a consumer, we think of like the retail banking, because that would affect probably most of the mm -hmm. people. Where do you see like, let's say retail banking, when you look at all these fintech companies that you see, are we going to walk into a branch in, let's say, five to 10 years from now? Yeah, it depends. I mean, at the end, uh, the retail customer is adapting new technologies faster than most corporates think, I would say. I mean, uh, when you look at the behavior uh, in other other industries, I mean, it's quite common that you have the mobile as one of your key points of access. And I think that will become quite uh, regular in the financial services world as well. Additionally, I mean, from my side, I think there are quite a few very interesting things happening outside of the end customer business, so B2B approaches, which are perhaps not that obvious as an end customer, where I see a tremendous potential for disruption and for mm -hmm. new business models. So I, I think instead of always focusing on the end customer, especially from an investment perspective, I think it's worthwhile to really also uh, see what's happening behind the, mm -hmm. the walls, let's call it that way. I mean, like you, you're commuting between uh, Germany and Berlin and, and Zurich and Switzerland. Um, I think there's not many people who have like such a deep insight into both startup ecosystem. So maybe you can show us a little bit or like mention two or three points where you can say like, well, this is working very well in Berlin and maybe we need some improvement in Switzerland or vice versa. Yeah, I think um, one of the key differentiators in Berlin is the fast moving surrounding. I mean, as I said, for example, right now at Finleap, we have uh, over 80 open job positions. So I think we have Finleap alone uh, more more uh, open job positions than in the whole Swiss fintech ecosystem combined. Um, so if something works out in, in, in Germany, you can scale much faster. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I would say Zurich or Switzerland in general is a perfect surrounding as an entrepreneur because you have a very liberal and entrepreneur friendly surrounding. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think the combination uh, of being based in Zurich and running some businesses perhaps uh, based in Berlin is uh, quite a neat setup. And I think uh, when I sometimes look who's sitting in the plane from 
Berlin to Zurich and vice versa. It's funny to see how many Swiss entrepreneurs uh, have a similar setup. So yeah. I think this combination of uh, having Zurich as a, as a base and then doing uh, business in other European hubs is something which is getting more and more relevant. Mm -hmm, absolutely, with the globalization, with the ease exactly. of traveling. And exactly. Absolutely. Tell me, like to wrap up this uh, show, I would like you know to get a little bit of an insight of someone who once sold uh, his own company to um, another big company. Maybe you can share a little bit with uh, potential um, or entrepreneurs who are currently thinking of selling their company. How do people feel? How do how is it like to sell your own company? Yeah, I would say it shouldn't be the main driver to found a company because if you're successful, you will always find uh, potential buyers. So mm -hmm. I think that's just a like a side effect of being a successful entrepreneur. I mean, it depends also on the case. If you, for example, with usgang.ch, all the original founders had uh, different plans uh, in the future. So uh, selling the company to make sustainable future development uh, or to create a sustainable base for the company. I mean, usgang.ch is still existing. As we speak, we I think this weekend we celebrate the 16th birthday. So <laughs> for an internet company, that's not that bad. So I think that's for the company itself, it was a very good decision because nobody of the original founders is on board anymore. And now being part of this uh, big German publishing house, uh, mm -hmm. the whole uh, development uh, is much more sustainable. On the other hand, yeah, being an entrepreneur, I mean, after you sign the document, to sell your shares and, and uh, I don't know, give it uh, to the buyer. It's definitely quite a strange and, and a unique situation because normally you worked very hard for several years and put all your passion, time and efforts into your own uh, baby. So I think if it's not just monetary driven, but also for the good of, of your own company, I think it's like a, quite a natural good step. In my case, uh, having had two companies, I, I co-founded now uh, being part of bigger organizations, being lucky that both times uh, we succeeded uh, to create something from scratch, which, which uh, became relevant for other uh, corporates. Um, I think it's a, it's a good feeling and you can use all your experiences and all the things you learn to uh, support other emerging entrepreneurs, which perhaps in the future have a similar path uh, ahead of them. Mark, thank you very much for your insights into your life and uh, Finleap and all the projects you have at the moment. Thank you very much for all uh, who was watching till the end. And I hopefully see you very soon with another episode. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.